Hello everyone, my name is Catherine and I'm a professional cook. Today I would like to talk about asparagus. I know it's a little bit late for this video, but it took me a little while to gather all the information I wanted. Anyway, the season of asparagus lasts from April to June, so we still can play around with it. I would like to tell you what asparagus is, where it comes from, what is great about it, and all those characteristics that makes it so delicious. Also, at the end of this video, I prepared a recipe video for you. I hope you enjoy it, and let's get started. Asparagus is a native plant of Eurasia, and it was a delicacy in Roman and Greek times. And only the young shoots of this plant are used before they start opening up because the older they are, the more woody flavor they have. And when the top of the plant is already opened up, there is not much uh, pleasant flavor left in it. Asparagus is a great vegetable, in my opinion. It is very versatile, it has a very light texture and flavor, and it can be a great side dish to many dishes. It is a great source of fiber, vitamin C, K, B1, B2, B6, B9, iron, and many other nutrients. However, it's very important not to overcook asparagus, or it loses its amazing texture and light flavor. It becomes too soft in my opinion and that's not the asparagus I would want to eat. That's the best part about asparagus is that it's crunchy and that's true, it doesn't have that much flavor. We were recently talking about asparagus with one of my friends on Instagram and she inspired me to talk about asparagus specifically and she was wondering how to cook it because that's true asparagus doesn't really have a lot of flavor going on that's the great things about it it has great texture you don't have to cook it for a long time it's so fresh so juicy and you can add more flavors and you can add body to your dish with some fats. Try choosing the asparagus that's a little bit thicker if you would like to cook it as a side dish. Like this, you will have less chances of overcooking it. To the interesting fact, the thickness of asparagus indicates the age of the plant, not the age of the stem. There are three most popular types, green, white, and purple. Personally, my favorite type is green and purple because it's practically the same thing and actually don't get confused and don't get too excited about the purple asparagus because it turns green when you cook it. White asparagus is technically the same plant but farmers use this planting technique when they cover the plant with soil and there is no photosynthesis happening in the plant so it turns white. Personally not my favorite type of asparagus there is even less flavor going on maybe it works for someone not for me. To prepare the asparagus, I wash it normally first. And here comes a question. The most important one, I guess, in cooking the asparagus is to peel or not to peel. I read some articles about it. <laughs> uh, the author was saying that he always peels the asparagus and it was very confusing for him uh, when people say they don't. I don't know. Personally, I peel the stems that are a little bit thicker. Some chefs cut the, you know, the small leaves on the stem and don't peel it. If I just use asparagus as a part of a dish, if I, like as a stir fry or in a risotto, then I don't peel, I don't do anything, I just chop it. Of course, I always trim off the bottom part of asparagus, the one that's already a little bit woody or doesn't have that much color and flavor. Also, there is a very popular technique when you just peel the very bottom, like two, three centimeters of asparagus, it's been very popular lately. If I, I'll try finding a picture and putting it here. I think I should find it, it's very popular. I'm, I'm not sure if there is a name for this technique. If there is, I don't know about it yet, but we'll see and we'll figure it out together, I guess. So it's quite easy. You should choose yourself, I think, if you would like to peel or not. Again, as a rule of thumb, if the stem is thinner, I don't really bother. If it's on a thicker side, then I would give it a little peel. 
on the bottom part and mostly if people peel the asparagus it's mostly like the bottom half and actually i got to know recently that in kosher cooking people don't use the tops of asparagus you know the like the ones that looks like flowers and i was so surprised about it because for me that's the best part and it's uh, so interesting how the world is just so versatile and so different and now i would like to talk about the most popular ways to cook asparagus and the most popular cooking methods for the asparagus are blanching grilling deep frying shaving pan or oven roasting and stir frying um, i normally blanch the asparagus if i use it in a salad some restaurants pre-cook the asparagus by blanching it personally for me it's not the best idea because the asparagus gets always overcooked and you know after watching i forgot the name of the movie but in that movie the lady her she's french she has a restaurant i know you guys know what i'm talking about and she has the asparagus wrapped in her napkin and she's like oh what is this is that how we serve asparagus and the asparagus just like, you know bending down just like very sad miserable overcooked asparagus in this restaurant the cuisine is not an old tired marriage it is a passionate affair of the heart every time i cook the asparagus i look if it's how much it's bending because if it's bending too much it means it's overcooked and it's not going to be pleasant to eat um what was i saying yeah <laughs> Blanching, I normally don't pre-cook the asparagus, only if it's gonna be stirred into something or it's gonna be a part of a salad. Grilling is great for the asparagus, especially having the char flavor on it is amazing. If you are grilling the asparagus, try to do it very quickly on high heat and also get thicker asparagus for grilling because like this, it won't be overcooked. It's very easy to overcook asparagus by grilling it. Shaving. It's a great technique, you don't need to blanch it, you can just shave it raw and normally it is done with a peeler. Asparagus shavings could be a great finishing touch on a dish, like pasta, or it could be stirred into pasta again, like, you know, like spaghetti or fettuccine and some strings of asparagus will be in it, like sort of zucchini noodles but asparagus noodles or it can be also a great part of a salad like shaved vegetable salad with a lot of different other shaved vegetables like radishes or beets you know it's uh, i feel like it's a great technique it looks great and very um fresh roasting asparagus is also great again make sure it's done on very high heat and very quickly and you can play around with seasoning when you're doing that. I like using orange juice uh, when cooking my asparagus and a lot of other vegetables, but asparagus specifically and orange zest, obviously. Stir frying, it just can be a great part of stir fried vegetables for some kind of Asian style noodles. And here I would like to talk about some popular flavor combinations and how asparagus is used. Eggs and hollandaise sauce. That's a big classic, especially brunches. It just, asparagus can take all of the richness of egg yolk and hollandaise sauce, especially if you season asparagus with some lemon juice. Oof, that would be awesome. And that extra crunchiness of the asparagus adds a great texture to the dish and it balances everything out. Fish, um, again, as I told you, it can be a great side dish. And I see that most of the time, if asparagus is used as side dish, it is served with fish. And I understand why, because fish is light in texture and flavor as well. Depends on the fish as well. Cheese, I roll ricotta or parm, also goat cheese, a lot of other cheeses I used. Um, I don't have much to say about it, it's just a popular flavor combination. Ham, again, as a side to eggs benedict, for example. Butter, ooh, asparagus loves some butter. I mean, who doesn't, right? Which ingredient doesn't really like butter? And it's the same principle as with egg yolk and holiday sauce. It's just as that richness to the asparagus that it's lacking. Lemon, truffles, I don't know why, but asparagus is paired a lot with truffles. And bacon, same thing as with butter, adds richness and maybe extra texture if 
you make crispy bacon. Since asparagus is used a lot for breakfasts and brunches, it is often paired with bacon as it is just a part of breakfast menu. And also for you, I found these two dishes. There are of course more than two dishes in this world, but I decided to give you the example of two dishes. And it's kind of a modern take on classic combinations. First one is crispy hands egg and asparagus soup. And here in this recipe, you can see those flavor combinations I was talking about, like truffles and eggs. I feel like just looking at those recipes, of course you won't make them at home, but you will see how chefs play around with those traditional flavor combinations. Traditional flavor combinations. <laughs> and another recipe that I found for you is asparagus and bio eggs with ricotta cheese. Cheese, like in this recipe, ricotta and parm specifically, and eggs are used to bring out the flavor of asparagus. And also the reason why I chose these dishes is because Asparagus here is a star of a show, not only a side dish. And I just wanted to show you how chefs are playing around with this ingredient. And sometimes we tend to forget about it because it's kind of bland, but we just should remember that it's also awesome and it can be bring diversity to our menus. So that's what I wanted to tell you about asparagus specifically. And now I would like to talk about my recipe, why I decided to make it and just break it down a little bit for you. So for this recipe with asparagus, I chose to make saffron risotto with asparagus and shrimp with a touch of coffee reduction. To make this dish, I actually got inspired from an Italian chef, Dennis Lucchi from Singapore. He has this dish of saffron rice with um, coffee reduction and I just decided to try this flavor combination. Of course, it's kind of my take on it. He's using sunchokes and truffles, I believe. I will leave you the link in, to the video where I found it in the description box down below. It's a um, YouTube channel of Michelin Guide. It just looked so good and I had some saffron at home, so I decided to try it out. Also, I wanted to talk about risotto in this video. It's a great technique that I think everyone should know. It is weird for me because cooking risotto perfectly is difficult, but it's also not as difficult as you might think. I feel like this dish could be a great summer dinner. It is so light, saffron, asparagus and shrimp, they just all go well together and some bitterness of coffee makes it stand out a little bit more. If you don't like this flavor combination, that's fine. You don't have to add any coffee to it if that feels a little bit extravagant to you. But cooking and making saffron risotto is definitely a must. It looks amazing and tastes delicious as well. But before we get into cooking, I would like to talk about the dish itself. So one of the most important ingredients for a good hearty risotto is rice, normally short grain. Rice is used for the risotto and if normally you rinse all the starch off the rice, in risotto you don't want to do that. You need the starch to make risotto more like a porridge and you know, you want the starch to come out of rice. The most popular types of rice that are used to make the risotto are Carnaroli, Arborio and Vialone Nano. I hope I pronounced them correctly. In my risotto I will be using Vialone Nano, so make sure you have the right type of rice or your risotto just won't work. The next most important ingredient to after the rice is a good stock. Normally you should use the stock that reflect the ingredients the most. Normally I prefer using chicken stock for any of my risottos or if I'm adding seafood then I would prefer using seafood stock but normally I have at home chicken stock most of the time. It's just easier to make and it's more versatile. I just need to warn you now I don't have chicken stock left, so I'm just making it with water. It's okay, <laughs> not everyone has chicken stock just laying around. I don't normally have cubes at home. When I was trying out this recipe, of course, with stock it would have been better, but water was fine as well. When it comes to wine, dry white wine is used mostly in the risotto. Of course, you can use red wine, and there is such dish as red wine risotto, but try um, choosing light-bodied wines such as Pinot Noir or Shiraz. Personally, when I choose wine, 
I use the wine that I'm gonna be drinking my risotto with later. In general, if you don't cook a lot of risotto, a big batch, I don't bother buying cooking wine, especially for the risotto. Like, using good wine will make your risotto even better and then it will be pairing perfectly with your glass of wine if you're having it with your risotto. But just try choosing dry wines if you would like to experiment with different flavors because wine can give you an interesting variety of flavors go for it in this recipe i'm using pinot grigio just because i love it also shallots are important ingredients of the risotto if you don't have any shallots using white onion or yellow onion is perfectly fine as well for me farm is also one of the most important ingredients that you should focus on and this time i actually spent a little more and got a real farm and don't be shy with farm it will bring you extra seasoning and extra flavor. Don't forget that parm has salt in it and it acts like an extra seasoning. Also, I love a good amount of black pepper in my risotto. If you're not a huge fan of black pepper, that's fine. It's just I'm saying that it goes well with risotto specifically. And risotto is a great versatile dish. There are so many recipes, but I decided to start with this one and especially since it involves asparagus. In this recipe, since I have a very thin asparagus, I'm not gonna be blanching it ahead. I'm just gonna cook it for a minute or two in my risotto. I'm just gonna fold it in before adding parm and butter and finalizing the seasoning and all that. Let's go ahead and make our delicious risotto! First, set up the station the way you feel comfortable. Then we start with the preparation of vegetables. First, peel the shallots. Then cut them in half. Then here I'm using a traditional technique to cut shallots and onions. I won't go too much into details, but if you're interested, I would make a video about it, although there is a lot of information around the internet already. Since I already prepared the asparagus on the videos about cuts, I continue with shrimp. My shrimp is already deveined and peeled, only the tails are left, so the preparation is very easy, but if yours is still raw, of course you will need to devein it and peel properly. Then I cut them in three parts, all depends on the size of your shrimp. Then I gather all the ingredients and put my equipment on stove. Water is already heating up and one of my pots where I will be cooking the risotto is already hot. And now we can start cooking the risotto. First I add oil to a relatively hot pan. My pan is on medium-high heat. Then I add the shallots to listen to the sizzle. Here I add some garlic paste because I didn't have fresh garlic in my supermarket. And of course, if you will be using fresh garlic, which I highly recommend, I would recommend you cutting it with the shallots. When the shallots and garlic are translucent and a little bit caramelized, I add the rice. I stir it thoroughly and wait until the egg becomes translucent. Then I deglaze the pot with the wine of my choice. Stir, stir. Here you can see that wine already evaporated and absorbed into the rice. It means we can start adding water. Normally I divide water in four or five parts and I add each one of them separately. Don't forget to stir, not constantly, but regularly so that the rice doesn't get stuck on the bottom. Here I add the second portion of the water and here comes saffron. My saffron is not that strong, so I add a little more than I would prefer. Salt, pepper. Also, meanwhile, while my risotto is cooking, I am making some coffee and then I put it on the stove to reduce it. Here you can see that my risotto is already bright yellow, beautiful color. And the rice is almost cooked, so that's when I add my asparagus and shrimp. It's just enough time for them to get cooked.
To finish up my risotto, I add butter, a splash of olive oil and a lot of parm. A lot. As I mentioned before, parm makes it extremely delicious and seasoned all the way through. So everything's ready! We're almost ready to plate up. On the side I seasoned my salad of cilantro leaves and shaved asparagus with olive oil and salt. You can adjust consistency of your risotto to your taste. You can make it soupier or a little drier, as you wish. I like it somewhere in between. First I put risotto into my bowl. A few splashes of coffee reduction. You really don't want to go too hard on it because obviously it is bitter. My salad goes on top and a few pieces of shaved parm. Here we go! I hope you enjoyed this recipe, I would really recommend everyone to try it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll see you next time, bye!